welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today is teachers day and we at atcm pay our salutations to all the teachers who have guided us mentored us throughout this journey of medicine and life today's topic is imaging in toxicology so how we have formatted it today is that first we will be putting up it as a question an image question and then we'll move on to the answer to this question so here we have a 22 year old uh, a trainee in medicine who was admitted with in with a history of intravenous injection of x x means a substance uh, following a depressive episode on arrival he was found to be anxious but hemodynamically stable at the uh, this was an x-ray taken few days later of the same patient uh, so what could this be the answer is uh, uh, intravenous injection of elemental mercury. So what you hear is, uh, you can see that the pulmonary, pulmonary vasculature is lightened up uh, in an X-ray X-ray because of the, uh, the because of the elemental mercury. So usually con compared with other forms of uh, mercury intoxication, like inhalation of mercury, intravenous could be uh, uh, harmless. Uh, to the person who has who has uh, injected it we ourselves had a patient um, who had a similar uh, picture in the x-ray during the initial days but over years uh, uh, it was found that uh, uh, the this this appearance had almost completely uh, disappeared uh, but remember that when carried out by circulation uh, this elemental mercury uh, tends to lodge in the lungs and mediastinum and is also known to reach other organs over a period of time so this is an x-ray of metallic pulmonary embolism because of injection of uh, elemental mercury now what you see here is again other forms of uh, mercury inside the human body so what you see here is an unintentional rupture of something called as a canton intestinal tube uh, which are intestinal tubes which are used which has a uh, mercury tip which is uh, which helps to uh, helps the tube to remain in a specific position we don't use it nowadays but uh, this is of uh, uh, historical and uh, uh, other medical importance from from a knowledge perspective and what you hear see here is uh, an, a subcutaneous injection of uh, elemental mercury uh, into into the uh, subcutaneous plane uh, injection into a subcutaneous plane this can in fact help us uh, to plan the debridement also so so this is this 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 is with regards to uh, mercury now we will move on to the next case so what you see here is an x-ray of the knees of a child with x poisoning uh, the metaphyseal regions of the distal femur and proximal tibia has developed or as you see here transverse bands representing bone growth abnormalities caused by x toxicity uh, the multiplicity of x implies repeated uh, exposure to x so what are we dealing with so you can s clearly see these these lines this is uh, an x-ray following chronic lead poisoning so as you all know the skeletal radiographs uh, shown before suggest diagnosis of chronic lead poisoning in children even before the blood level concentration is obtained the metaphyseal regions of rapidly growing long bones develop transverse bands of increasing density along the growth plate the characteristic locations of these uh, lines also called as lead lines are distal femur and proximal tibia uh, and there could be also flaring of distal uh, metaphyses can also occur uh, such lead lines are also seen other than other than uh, tibia and femur uh, it could be also seen in vertebral bodies and iliac crust also remember that in most children it takes several weeks for the little lines to appear although in very young infants uh, it can develop within days of exposure and after the exposure to lead ceases uh, these lead lines diminishes and eventually disappear in some children uh, key thing to remember here is these lead lines do not represent deposition of lead in the bone but rather it is it, it is caused by the toxic effect of lead on the bone growth uh, lead, uh, these uh, lead impedes the resorption of calcified cartilage in the zone of provisional calcification adjacent to the growth plate this is termed as chondrosclerosis uh, at this point it's also important to uh, remember that this need not be always very pathognomic of lead, po lead uh, toxicity uh, other xenobiotics that can cause metaphyseal bands are yellow phosphorus bismuth and vitamin d 
This again, what you see here is a bullet wound, uh, which uh, uh, an X-ray uh, of a person who had had a uh, bullet wound. Uh, so the bullet was embedded into the articular surfaces of the humeral head, and the portion of the bullet that protruded into the joint space was surgically removed. Uh, uh, leaving a portion of the bullet exposed in the synovial space. A second bullet was embedded in the muscles of the scapula. Eight years after the injury, the patient presented with weakness and anemia. Note weakness and anemia. Extensive X deposition throughout the uh, synovium was seen and the blood X concentration was 91 mcg per deciliter. So here again, what are we talking? What, what have we represented as X? And the answer is same again the, we are talking about lead so this classical appearance in x-ray is called as lead arthrogram and lead arthrography is a well-known complication of gunshot injuries with retained intra-articular bullets so these are lead bullets which remain in the synovium and slowly uh, release lead into the circulation leading to complications uh, similar to chronic lead uh, toxicity now this again we have an x-ray abdomen uh, sorry ct abdomen of a patient uh, a 30 year old man who developed abdominal pain and vomiting one day after arriving from a plane flight from uh, Colombia. It need not be Colombia, it, it could be uh, very well anywhere in the world. So what could be the diagnosis here? You can see something very interesting in this bubble. Yes, this is a CT image of uh, body packers. So body packers are individuals who smuggle large quantities of illicit drugs in secured seal uh, packets. The sensitivity of abdominal radiograph for such packets is high and it ranges from 85 to 90 percentage. Um, uniformly shaped oblong packets are seen on abdominal radiographs either because there is a thin layer of air or metallic foil within the uh, container wall or because the packets are outlined by bubble gas. Okay, so also remember that a rupture of, of uh, such, a, such a pack could be uh, fatal to the person who is carrying it. Here again, uh, you can see the x-ray of a similar situation where multiple oblong packets of uniform size and shape are seen through the bowel. And in the other x-ray, packets are visible because they are surrounded by a thin layer of air within the wall of the packet as you can see here. So these could be the uh, 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 scenarios where it can be picked up in the x-ray itself. Now this is slightly different. What you hear, see here are more like staples. This is something called as a body stuffer. So a body stuffer is an individual who in an attempt to avoid uh, imminent arrest hurriedly uh, ingest a contraband uh, in insecure packages. So here the risk is high. So the difference between a body packer and a body stuffer is a body packer it is designed to stay in the abdomen for some time. Usually the packets are designed in such a way uh, it's meant to be carried till the destination. But body stuffer is suddenly he, uh, the, the person who is carrying the drug sees a uh, uh, legal officer or somebody and he swallows this uh, this packet of, of drugs uh, which he was supposed to carry in hand or in the pack. But the key message here would be I would say the abdominal radiograph should not be relied on exclusively to exclude the diagnosis of body packing. So uh, 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 it, it, CT would remain as, as a more, more concrete uh, uh, diagnostic tool. Now, uh, here is an x-ray of a 25-year-old lady who has allegedly consumed 200 tablets of X uh, with a suicidal intention. Uh, the total uh, dose amounted to around 13.5 grams of elemental X and she had abdominal pain with vomiting and was given gastric lavage along with supportive care at the primary health center. She was referred to a hospital after 24 hours of ingestion for further management and at presentation she was hemodynamically stable with normal pulse rate and blood pressure. So this was the x-ray which was uh, taken at uh, the local hospital and you can see something uh, in, in her bowel. So this is an x-ray of a person who has uh, consumed iron tablets. So remember that the adult strength ferrous tablets are readily detected radiographically because they are highly radiopaque and disintegrate slowly when ingested. But remember that some iron preparations are not radiographically detectable. Uh, liquid chewable or encapsulated iron preparations rapidly fragment and disperse after ingestion. So even when intact, uh, these preparations are less radiopaque than ferrous sulfate uh, tablets. So uh, x-ray can be a tool in, in, in helping us in diagnosing iron uh, overdose, but uh, that need not, uh, a negative x-ray need not always rule it out. Now, what you see here is an X poisoning causing a diffuse increase in bone mineralization. Um, 
and Y, which uh, occurs where drinking water contains very high concentrations of X. As an occupational, uh, it can also occur as an occupational exposure among aluminium workers who handle uh, cryolite sodium aluminium X again or with excessive tea drinking. And the skeletal changes associated with Y are osteosclerosis, also called as uh, hyperosteosis deformance, osteophytosis, and ligament calcification. So you can see certain uh, changes in the uh, X ray. So what are we talking about? So what is X and what is Y? So X is basically fluoride exposure and Y the condition which it causes is called as fluorosis. So periosteal newborn formation also called as peri uh, periosteitis uh, deformance uh, is characteristic of uh, skeletal fluorosis. Without a history of fluoride exposure the clinical and radiological findings are often mistaken as osteoblastic uh, skeletal metastasis. The diagnosis of fluorosis is confirmed by histological examination of bone and measurement of fluoride concentrations in both bone and urine. So that is with uh, fluoride and fluorosis. Yeah, moving on to next. So uh, what disease condition are we talking about? So you can see an X-ray and uh, MRI images of femur uh, uh, and it's marked stage 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and name any xenobiotic which can lead to this. So uh, this is kind of as you know a staging of, of, of something, right? Okay, what is it? So what we see here is, uh, is five stages of osteonecrosis and, and one drug which is very very commonly associated with it is steroid. Um, uh, we commonly have uh, encountered something called as avascular necrosis of femur. So this will fall into this, this thing of osteonecrosis and uh, the stage one is where there is no visible changes on x-ray but uh, changes could be demonstrated on MRI. Stage two there are some radiological changes on the femur head but the joint surface maintain, maintains its integrity but as the disease progresses the surface of the femur head begins to collapse and finally the integrity of joint is destroyed that is from stage three to stage four. So this is uh, uh, the appearance in osteonecrosis and steroid associated uh, osteonecrosis uh, also called as SAON is common uh, is a common non-traumatic osteonecrosis and uh, it's it's common uh, in patients who are on chronic exposure to steroids. Other other substance which can cause uh, osteonecrosis is commonly is uh, alcohol. Right. Uh, here we have an alcoholic 31 year old man who is otherwise healthy who was admitted to emergency department four hours after ingestion of a herbicide to commit suicide. Uh, digestive decontamination and hemodialysis was immediately performed and the patient survived. So he was discharged two months later. Uh, okay, so that was kind of a uh, successful revival of a uh, substance which is very very uh, well known to be fatal. And what you see here is a CT which is taken one year after after a safe discharge. What could be the uh, what could be the uh, herbicide which he had consumed one year back? So this is a CT of a pulmonary fibrosis which is induced by paracute poisoning. So the CT demonstrated extensive lung fibrosis with alveolar destruction distributed predominantly in the central regions of the lung. The honeycombing resulting in thick walled air filled cyst measuring not more than one centimeter and arranged in several layers. So uh, this is just to uh, drive home the point uh, that, uh, that uh, a person who had consumed a paracute can have uh, long term lung uh, problems. Okay, what do we see here? So we have a 26 year old uh, patient who had presented with 24 hour history of pleuritic chest pain following intranasal uh, cocaine insufflation. Uh, the cardiovascular and respiratory examinations were unremarkable. Uh, his admission blood tests were within normal limits. Uh, the ECG showed sinus rhythm with ST elevation in an infralateral uh, distribution. Uh, this appeared to be an early repolarization change but no evolving changes in the ECG. Uh, but what are you seeing in the x-ray here? So what you saw in the x-ray is uh, pneumomediastinum in cocaine users. So pneumomediastinum in cocaine users is widely ascribed to uh, barotrauma use during the insufflation process itself. Cocaine can cause bronchospasm uh, causing increased alveolar pressure that is further increased by forceful snorting. 
okay what do you see here so we have an mri of a patient uh, so he's a 24 a 25 year old man who was found unconscious with high anion gap metabolic acidosis and there is very strong history of substance abuse so you are seeing some hyperandrogenicities in the uh, swi image you are seeing some hemorrhage so what could this be So what we saw in the MRI are pronounced bilateral symmetrical high T2 and flare signals in caudate nucleus and the putamen along with uh, nearby subcortical white matter of insular regions external and extreme capsules and the uh, heme sequence uh, reveals small hemorrhages within the left putamen as well as focal hematoma in the anteromedial aspect of the left temporal lobe and the frontobasal area so so basically uh, this could be an uh, uh, mri which is suggestive of methanol ingestion but also remember that an early change uh, in a methanol uh, uh, ingestion could be a necrotizing hemorrhagic uh, uh, complication other differential diagnosis for uh, toxic encephalopathies involving basal ganglia are as you know carbon monoxide neurotoxicity cyanide neurotoxicity and also organophosphate neurotoxicity okay what do you see here so here uh, is an x-ray and ct image of an elderly gentleman who as you see in the image has a pacemaker in situ Uh, on chronic medications for atrial fibrillation uh, he presents with shortness of breath so what is the finding here and what could be the culprit drug the clue very well lies in atrial fibrillation so what do you, what you see here is uh, a, a case of amiodron lung toxicity and remember that it can occur at any time from the initial dose of amiodron to more than a decade into treatment so it could be an acute onset or on a patient for a patient who has been taking amiodron on long term when he presents with uh, pulmonary uh, symptoms uh, an amiodron lung toxicity should uh, be part of your differential diagnosis Uh, remember that the basal predominance of reticular opacity is with ground glassing uh, ground glass shadowing traction bronchiectasis and architectural distortion could be findings you see in a ct uh, suggestion of honeycombing along with anterior subpleural surface of the left upper lobe uh, large area of air trapping on the right middle lobe there is also pneumomediastinum and small bilateral pneumothorax so so this uh, this is the description of the ct which here which we have uh, shown here and uh, so the message here is to remember the pulmonary complications of amiodron yeah now we will move on to the last case for the day so what you see here is a 15 month old uh, uh, baby who was brought to er with possibly aspirated or swallowing something which of course the parents told what it was and uh, what are we seeing here so you are seeing a circular object the differentials as you uh, correctly would have guessed are batteries and coins but you can as you look closely you can see a thin rim around uh, the edges so this is more or less uh, kind of uh, uh, points towards a battery rather than a coin Uh, especially from our geographical point of view so button coin uh, disc batteries large in esophagus must be retrieved immediately as the mucosa can uh, close a circuit resulting in electrical burns and even perforations we ourselves had a patient who had uh, uh, ended up with esophageal perforation uh, because of a battery ingestion and also remember that old batteries uh, contained uh, toxic metals such as mercury or cadmium uh for which a chelating agent was uh, given if they had leaked and has uh, uh caused systemic uh, <coughs> toxicity so the key thing here is to identify it and uh, remember that batteries needs to be uh, tackled uh, uh, with on a priority basis so i believe uh, um, uh, we had uh, discussed some uh, very very interesting images and uh, uh, through the session uh, uh, the basics of imaging in toxicology has been uh, addressed with uh, uh, with reasonable certainty so all of you have a good day thank you